Good morning, everyone, and I want to wish you a Merry Christmas on this beautiful Christmas day. I know for many of us, this is a very different Christmas. And I have really asked you throughout Advent and into the Christmas season to think of this indeed as different, but as special. Because really, the season of Christmas is about the ultimate letting go. It is about God self-emptying and becoming one of us, becoming flesh incarnate in Jesus Christ. God doesn't decide to come as some kind of vengeful head of a host of army. The only host that night was the host of angels singing glory. Hallelujah. We tend to think of letting go as losing less than. And we've had to let go of many of our beloved Christmas traditions. And now we've even had to let go of our Christmas in-person worship. We will still worship Christmas Eve and throughout the Christmas season in prayer and in gathering together online, but not in person. So I'm going to invite you again to not only think of this Advent as different and special, but to think of this celebration this Christmas, not as less than other years, not as a loss, but as a loosening, not a loss, but a loosening, a letting go, a releasing or shedding those things that sometimes when we try to achieve them and get to them in this season, we lose the meaning of the season itself the essence of the meaning of Christmas. I, I hesitate to quote uh, the Grinch who stole Christmas because that is not at all a religious film. But I have to say that the essence or the message when all of the food was stolen and all of the tri trimmings and trippings and presents and decorations were taken away, that the true meaning of the celebration could not be stolen or taken away. It's interesting, I have the figures from the manger from the crash, And you can see I've only chosen the figures of the household. Much like we are in our households this Christmas. And for some of that, that might be two people. It might be a family. It might be a person alone. But we are assured by God that we are never truly alone. God with us, Emmanuel, abides within each and every one of us, comforting, strengthening, and inspiring. So I'm going to extend another invitation to you for the Christmas season. In this shortest of the church seasons. It is not two days, it is 12 days of Christmas. I invite you to each of the 12 days of Christmas, each of them, to do three things. To do something that is faith-filled. That can be prayer, it could be reading scripture, it could be memorizing scripture, anything that is faith -filled filled. So that's one. I invite you also to do something hope-filled. That might be reaching out to someone else in need. That might be helping with the food cupboard. There's all kinds of things that we can do that speak to our hope. Sometimes it's just being positive in the face of so much negative news and being hopeful. Faithful, hopeful, and you know what the third one I'm going to ask you, to be love-filled, to do, to reflect on love-filled. In the incarnation, we celebrate the greatest act of self-giving love of God. And so I ask you to do 
and to be faithful, hopeful, and loving. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love, and love came down at Christmas. It is the ultimate gift. I wish you a very happy Christmas, however that might look. Whether you are on your own with one other or a few others from your host household, I invite you to remember the love of God, our God who is love, so loved this world that he gave and give in return. Thank you. Have a blessed Christmas.